Why was Finn banished from the family? Want to know more about it? Then keep watching the video till the end. When all of the black cat traders had been killed or expelled from the Shelby family by the end of the Peaky Blinders finale, the gang gathered in the wood of the recently dynamited Arrow House for a farewell banquet. As Tommy said his goodbyes, everyone except Lizzie, who'd left Tommy after he slept with Dinah Mitford and the newly disowned Finn, raised a glass to family. Tommy thought he was on his way to death, but he was surprised along the way. We go over to that, as well as other questions fans may have following, lock and key. Finn was banished from his family because he failed the Arrow House test and chose his friend over his family, since Arthur coerced former professional footballer Billy Great into assisting with match fixing for the Peaky Blinders. Great has worked at the batting shop alongside Finn Shelby. They became close over the course of five years, drinking whiskey, snorting cocaine, and womanizing together. Finn had no idea Billy was also working as an informant for the IRA, revealing Peaky Blinders secrets. When a drunken Finn revealed that the gang planned to shoot a fascist on the night of Mosley's Bingley Hall rally, Great called Lorna McKee, and the IRA foiled the assassinations by killing sniper Barney Thompson, Ibarama Gold, and Polly Gray. Tommy discovered the truth after Jack Nelson violently forced Billy Gray to become an informant for his operation, possibly because Billy was passing information to Gina Gray, whom Tommy had surveilled and was blackmailing over her adultery with Oswald Mosley. Tommy called a meeting at the garrison in order to feed Billy false information in order to trick the IRA into falling into a trap. He convinced Billy that he trusted Michael Gray and that Arthur would be alone and vulnerable on a particular night. Billy promptly informed Gina of this information and both Michael's plan to kill Tommy and the IRA's plan to kill Arthur were thwarted by Tommy's scheming. At Arrow House, Duke and Isaiah drew Billy and Finn into the kitchen and told Finn to shoot Billy for being a traitor or face exile from the family. Finn refused and took the gun, aiming it at Duke and pulling the trigger onto empty chambers. Duke took the gun from Finn and told him that Charlie had anticipated his attempt to turn on them and had instructed him to leave the first two chambers of the gun empty. Duke then shot Billy Great in the head and informed Finn that by order of the peaky effing blenders, he was no longer a member of the Shelby family. Finn left, swearing vengeance on Duke, which will undoubtedly be mentioned in the upcoming Peaky Blinders feature film. Who is the preacher on the street outside of the Garrison Tavern? That was a brand new character from the finale named Lazarus, a fitting biblical name for someone who rises from the dead. Jason Williamson of Sleaford Mods plays him. Jeremiah, who was part of the ambush of the IRA assassins, was replaced by Lazarus. What happens in the Peaky Blinders movie? Peaky Blinders creator Stephen Knight announced in January 2021 that contrary to proposed plans for seven seasons, the TV show would end after six seasons and be followed by a feature film. That is the current plan as we discuss in greater details here. The film's production is currently scheduled to begin in early 2023, which means fans won't be able to see it until at least 2024. Knight has confirmed that Tommy and Arthur will be in the film, which is set during World War II. Since season 6 took place around 1935-1936, each new visit to the Shelby family tends to jump a few years, and World War II broke out in 1939, the timescale makes sense. The introductions of Conrad Kahn as Duke Shelby and his new rivalry with Finn Shelby, as well as the prominence of high-ranking Peaky Blinder Isaiah Jesus, the son of street preacher Jeremiah, are likely to provide plot for the film. Ada's burgeoning political career could also play a role, as could Stephen Graham's new character Hayden Stack, who was cast too much fanfare in season 6 but has only appeared in two scenes so far. Peaky Blinders would be incomplete without Tom Hardy's seemingly unkillable Alfie Solomon. It's not yet clear where the film will premiere, but it's likely to have a multi-platform release, with a limited cinema run plus BBC One or BBC iPlayer and Netflix airings. We'll update you as soon as we get more information. One minor question we hope the film clarifies is, at the banquet, what did Tommy say to Duke? After raising his glass to the family and breaking down as he told Charles to look after Lizzie and that he wanted him to be the best, Tommy whispered something into Duke's ear. Whatever it was, it has to be in the Peaky Blinders film. Is this a directive? A request for Charles and Lizzie's safety? A business strategy for the Shelby Company's dark side? More information on the burial locations? Another touch up and piece? Only time will tell. Why did Dr. Holford develop the tuberculoma diagnosis? A year or so into Tommy and Oswald Mosley's political partnership, Mosley arranged for his close friend and Nazi sympathizer, Dr. Michael Holford, to become Tommy's personal physician, unbeknownst to Tommy. Holford was Tommy's private doctor for three years, until Mosley and his pals decided Tommy's time was up. 
Mostly, Holford and fellow fascist Dr. Helen Rutherford plotted to convince Tommy that he was dying of an incurable disease in order to persuade him to commit suicide. They faked x-ray and an urgent diagnosis of inoperable tuberculoma in the brainstem after Tommy's daughter Ruby died of tuberculosis. Holford gave Tommy the diagnosis and advised him to seek a second opinion from Rutherford at St. Thomas's Hospital. She persisted in her deception, and by episode 4 of season 6, Tommy believed he had only 18 months to live. Co-conspirators of Mosley and Diana, Tommy went on the road alone in a wagon to prepare for death after making financial arrangements for his family, dynamiting his house, and holding a burial banquet in the woods. After a month, he flipped a coin to see if he should shoot himself, and it came up heads. He removed his wedding ring and pocket watch and placed them in the wagon alongside photos of Grace, Polly, John, Ruby, Lizzie, and Charles before loading a gun with a bullet engraved with his name and holding it to his head. That's when he heard Ruby's voice calling him outside. Ruby appeared to him in a vision and told him that he wasn't sick and that he needed to relight the fire. Tommy found a newspaper article about Oswald and Dinah's Berlin wedding in the ashes of his campfire. On the guest list in the photograph, Michael Holford and Helen Rutherford are doctors. He realized what was going on and confronted Holford, who admitted everything. Tommy was about to murder Holford when the bell rang at 11 a.m. The time armistice was declared in the First World War. He released Holford and returned to his camp, which had been set on fire on Holford's order. Tommy stood there watching the flames before mounting his horse and riding away. What was the song that played over the end credits? That was Lisa O'Neill's cover of Bob Dylan's All the Tired Horses, the second Lisa O'Neill song to appear in season 6 after Blackbird, and the second Bob Dylan song to close a season of Peaky Blinders after Richard Hawley's covers of Ballad of a Thin Man in season 4. What will become of Tommy now? Tommy could go back to Small Heath now that he's back from under the ground, or he could go anywhere because Holford's tuberculoma scheme and the burn wagon effectively faked his death for him. Tommy informed Arthur of the diagnosis and instructed him that when the time came, he would give Arthur the locations of the wagon so that he, Charlie, and Curly could burn his body and rake through the ashes for silver and gold. Arthur and company will arrive at the wagon to find it already burned, but with Tommy's watch and ring among the cinders. That means Tommy could ride away and become someone else entirely, forgetting his family and his past if he so desired. He could work as a spy for Winston Churchill, live an itinerant life, or travel abroad while everyone assumes Tommy Shelby, OBE, MP had died. That's all for today. Want to know more things about the Peaky Blinders or Thomas Shelby? Then like this video and please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.